There are so many life skills that we have just not been adequately taught or that have been pushed aside because of modern conveniences, but it's time to change that. So here are the six life skills that all grown women need to know. Hello friends and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Jills and I talk about things like feminine energy, self-improvement, and wellness for women. So if that sounds like something you're into, you should absolutely hit that red subscribe button below and join this little happy corner of the internet. So let's get into those life skills, shall we? Some of them are a bit more serious while others are a bit more fun, but either way, all of these skills have helped me to improve my life and be more intentional about the life I'm creating. Okay, so the first life skill that all women need to know is cooking. and. I know what you're thinking, but this is not a gender stereotype. Everyone needs to know how to cook. Our world has so many modern conveniences now, and most of the time, that is a really wonderful thing. But at the same time, we've also kind of begun to lose touch with our roots. And we rely so much on fast food and DoorDash and frozen meals that we don't truly know how to nourish ourselves anymore. And there are so many women now, so many people that just don't know how to cook. They don't know how to make healthy meals. They don't know how to make meals that they enjoy. And of course you don't need to be a five-star gourmet chef, but you do need to know how to feed yourself and how to nourish yourself. So if you feel like you're relying too much on delivery or relying too much on those pre-made frozen meals or relying too much on things like Kraft mac and cheese, then it's time to level up this area of your life. It's time to become an adult and learn how to cook. And I know it seems intimidating when you know nothing, but I promise you that once you get in there and learn the basics, it becomes so much easier, so much more enjoyable, and so much more fun. And it's a really rewarding thing, being able to cook this delicious meal, sit down at the dinner table with it, and really enjoy it. Or even cook for others as well, cooking for your friends and family, baking for your friends and family. I know not everyone might care about this, but for some women, it can be a really rewarding experience. Now, the second life skill that all women need is communication skills skills. And I think this is something that a lot of women are lacking because sadly, some women, probably a lot of women have been taught, whether it's directly or indirectly, that we should be quieter that we should be good little girls, that what we have to say is not very important. Or when we do speak, we're not fully being listened to, or we're being interrupted, or people don't believe us when we speak. And many of us have also been taught to stuff our emotions down, that communicating our emotions and our feelings is wrong, it's immature, it's emotional, or it elicits an eye roll. But as grown women, we need to be able to communicate our needs. We need to be able to communicate our feelings and our emotions. We need to be able to communicate our ideas, communicate our knowledge, communicate our desires, and we need to be able to do this in a mature and confident way. And I know I'm not like an expert communicator or something, but I have improved a massive amount. When I first started dating my husband, if we ever got into a fight or an argument, or if I was just like upset or sad about something, I would just completely shut down. Like, completely. I couldn't get anything out of my mouth. I had no ability to communicate how I was feeling or what I needed. And I mean, just to be honest, quite frankly, it almost destroyed our relationship. But luckily my husband was patient enough with me to stick with me and help me work on it. Now, of course things have changed because you know I've worked on this a bunch, but think about whenever you get into an argument with your partner or a friend, or whenever you're in an important work meeting or whatever situation, are you able to maturely articulate what you wanna say or how you're feeling. The key here is practice, starting small and practicing. And if you struggle with this, it likely won't be a easy breezy, comfortable experience for you. You'll likely have some temporary discomfort that you'll have to push through. You know, for me, it started with being completely shut down and then it grew to me being able to communicate, I feel sad. And then it grew to me being able to communicate when this happened, it made me feel sad. And it just continued to evolve and improve over time. Eventually it started to become more natural and comfortable for me and it will for you too. And as women, we need to start reclaiming our voice. We need to be unafraid of being heard, unafraid of speaking our truth in the small stuff and the big stuff. Next life skill we all need is time management. This is so important. Being able to be intentional with your time, being able to prioritize the things that matter to you, being able to fit in the things 
things that are important into your life. And we all have the same 24 hours in a day. It just depends on how you use it. Now that doesn't mean you need to be always productive, always working. I am not about that life. But even when you're resting and relaxing or spending time with friends and family, are you actually resting and relaxing? Or are you scrolling through your phone and being energetically drained by all the social media you're seeing? Or are you worrying about XYZ? Or when you're trying to get something done for work, are you being constantly distracted by all of the useless emails coming into your inbox? You can get so much more accomplished in your day when you're just really intentional about where you put your time and energy and where your attention goes and not wasting our time with useless things that don't really do anything for us. The essence of time management is using every second to the fullest. And that might mean working on that side business, or that might mean taking a bubble bath and reading a book and totally disconnecting. We need a balance of both of these things. But if you look back on your day and think, what did I even accomplish today? Why do I feel so drained even though I feel like I achieved nothing? Why was that restful Sunday not very restful at all? Then you likely need some help in this area. There's a super popular book. It's called Essentialism, The Disciplined Pursuit of Less by Greg McCowan, and it's all about doing less to do more. So it's about turning your attention away from the wrong stuff and focusing on the right stuff. So I'll link this book down below in the description box in case you wanna check it out. I feel like if there's anyone who struggles in this area, this might be a really good read. You should be actively creating the life you want with your time, with your days, weeks, years. And those who spend their time on the right things, one year from now, they will be in a totally different place than those who didn't. Next, we need to be able to track and understand our cycle naturally. And I'm not just saying we need to put the date of our last period in an app on our phone and have it predict the next one. That's not what I'm talking about. As women, we need to be in touch with our bodies. We need to know what's going on in our menstrual cycle. And unfortunately, it's just a basic life skill that most of us are just not taught. We need to be able to know on our own when we're ovulating if we're ovulating, when our period is coming, what phase of our cycle we're in, and how we can best support ourselves during those different phases. Because here's the thing, men have a 24 hour hormonal cycle. Their hormones are the same day in and day out. And so their lives are very consistent and routine. And that's why consistency and routine goes so well with the masculine. That's how they thrive. But women, we have on average about a month long hormone cycle. And so our hormones are changing throughout the month. We have these ebbs and flows. And so we are not the same woman every single day. And if you have no knowledge or awareness of this, then you will likely see your menstrual cycle as, you know, like a bad thing, something that makes you emotional or something that just kind of gets in your way. But your natural cyclical nature is part of what makes you a feminine being. It's part of your strength and your superpower Power if you can learn to harness it. There's a lot of wisdom and beauty in being in touch with your cycle and being in touch with your femininity in that way. Now, two books I'm gonna recommend for you, they're both back there. The first one is called Taking Charge of Your Fertility by Tony Weschler. This is all about how to track your cycle naturally, how to prevent pregnancy naturally, or how to help you conceive if that's what you wanna do. Now, the second book is In the Flow by Alyssa VT, and she's the one who talks all about how to harness those different strengths of our menstrual cycle. So if you find that topic interesting, definitely go check this book out. I also have a playlist up here though, where I go into detail about some of this stuff. So might wanna check that out as well. Unfortunately, this is just not taught to women growing up. So it's something that we have to teach ourselves. This is so important. Fifth life skill that all women need is dressing for their body type. Now, is this a life skill? <laughs> I don't know, but I do think it is valuable. It can mean the difference between feeling really confident in yourself or not so much, or not fully understanding why that woman over there looks so good in those clothes she's wearing, but you put on those exact same clothes and it just doesn't have the same effect. And then you feel bad about yourself for it. We're all built differently. And of course we're all beautiful in our own way, but it's a really good skill to be able to really work with what you've got. And you know, all those celebrities you see on the red carpet, they all have stylists who know how to dress them for their body type. They know how to make them look their best. For me, I naturally have a more athletic body type. That's just the way that I'm built. I have broader shoulders. I have a big rib cage. I don't have much definition between my waist and my hips. It's just kind of straight down. And honestly, I really do love my body and I love my athletic body type. And sometimes I do like to play that up, but sometimes I also like to give off the illusion of a traditionally more feminine body type, something a little bit softer, a little bit more well-balanced. And having the knowledge to dress for my body type allows me to 
create the illusion, I guess, of what I want. So if I want to look more feminine and soft, I can wear something that cinches at the waist a little bit, something that creates that illusion of a more of that hourglass shape. Or I can wear something like a V-neck, something like a deep V, something the opposite of what I'm wearing now that draws the eyes inward as opposed to drawing them outward and accentuating the broadness of my shoulders. Again, I don't do this all the time because I don't want to do this all the time, but it is a good life skill to have. And there's so much info about this online, how to learn like what body type you have and what looks best for that body type. It's pretty easy. But at the end of the day, you gotta know how to love what you got and how to work with what you got. And number six, something that all women need is that we need to understand finances and money. We need to understand how this works. We need to understand the practical and logistical side of money and have that basic financial literacy, but we also need to understand the energetics of money too. Because the reality is, is that money is how our world functions. It's how we experience the world. Money is how we get food. Money is how we travel. Money is how we get medicine. Money is how we go to concerts. And oftentimes money is how we make more money. And when you're an adult, it's really important to understand how how credit works, what debt really means, how taxes work, understanding the different ways you can invest and save, being aware of where your money is going and where it's actually being spent. Is it being used for valuable things that are actually enriching your life or is it just going down the drain? Having at least that basic financial literacy is so important. Some of you might not know this, I don't know, but before I got into this world here, I worked in finance for several years. And so that helped me feel more empowered in this area of my life. And my husband works in finance too. So he's very knowledgeable on this stuff, but not everyone has those resources or that experience to feel confident in this area. So if that's you, just remember that there are so many amazing resources out there. There are so many high quality books you can read. I'm sure there are a ton of amazing YouTube videos as well, but let's not forget about the energetics of money because all that financial literacy stuff, that practical and logistical side, all of those accounts, that is all the massive masculine side of money and all of that is important but money has a feminine side too. Money is energy. The way you think about money, the way you talk about money, your mindset toward money, the limiting beliefs you have toward money. All of this has a lot to do with how much money and wealth you have now or in the future. For example, if you have a belief that money is the root of all evil, then you will likely never be wealthy because at a subconscious level, you will resist money, even though you want it at the same time. Or if you have a belief that money is only made through grueling hard work, then you'll likely resist that as well. Again, money is energy and money has a feminine side. She loves to be loved. She doesn't like to stay stagnant. Remember the feminine is always moving and flowing. She wants to be circulated. She wants to be used for valuable things. How do you view money? Do you tell yourself that you hate money because you don't have any right now? Do you have bad thoughts toward money? Because if so, she will likely not be receptive towards your energy. She won't feel comfortable being around you. She doesn't want to be hated. She wants to be loved. She wants to feel safe in your energy. I've been really learning a lot about this topic in the past several months and this topic could be an entire video in itself. There's so much to say here. Maybe I'll do a video about this in the future. I mean, I'm not an expert, but maybe like a beginner's basic guide to the energetics of money. That might be interesting. Just remember that your internal money dialogue has a lot more to do with how much money you make than how hard you work. So real quick, I have two book recs for the energetics of money. I know you like my book recs. The first one is Rich As F by Amanda Francis. And this is a really good book. No BS guide kind of thing. Very straightforward, understanding the energetics of money. I really liked this book. Very easy to read. Next one is A Happy Pocket Full of Money. And this one is a little bit more difficult to understand. It's not difficult, but this is much more spiritually minded. It goes a little bit deeper into that whole spiritual side of it. So this is more of a good beginner's guide to understanding the energetics. And this is if you wanna go a bit deeper. Of course, I will link these below as I always do. Now there's a sneaky little seventh tip I'm gonna pop in here. One of our biggest superpowers as feminine beings is our intuition. There is no denying this. It is one of the most powerful things about us. If we can hear it, that is, if we can listen to it. So go watch this video, Connecting to Your Intuition, a no BS guide for how to use your intuition and get more clarity. There are so many women who are just completely disconnected from this side of ourselves. So I highly recommend you go check that out. So I will see you over there or I will see you next time.